Yo, what's up guys? It's Speed, one of the commissioners for the Skilling Cup 2020. Yo, it's Bailey, the main commissioner. And today we're going to be talking about the week one recap for our matchups here. So we had Birthro Bears versus GVG, Randor Crows versus Kandarin Calphites, Keldegrim Ketamine Crew versus Mauritania MTFs, Softened Seagulls versus Witch Haven Wizards. And before we get into the individual matchups, what did you think overall about Week One, Bailey? Uh, I think everyone came out and played pretty hard. Um, I think a lot of teams shocked me, uh, especially the Keldergrim crew. Um, kind of upset with the Seagulls' performance. Crows yep. definitely, definitely showed up like they said they would. Uh, the Gangsters definitely popped off Week One. I think it was a good overall week. A lot of people played a lot of RuneScape. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. There's definitely going to be quite a bit of changes to our um, Commissioner's Power Ranking, so stay tuned for that at the end. I uh, want to just jump in straight into the Birthrow Bears' this week. Yeah, um, the first thing we need to say about this matchup is that the displayed score is not correct, I believe, right? I yeah, so the Bears actually had... One. We, we kind of had an issue with week one. We've been working with uh, Michael, owner of Temple, pretty closely with... Uh, figuring out everything here, how to make everything work as best we could. So um, kind of had an issue with the comps and the matchups page is displaying a bit of different um, EHP values. So from this point onwards, it'll be a lot easier to do all the scaling and everything, but pretty much bears had 895 hours um, and GVG actually only lost one hour from a six hour. So they're at 911, I think pretty much. Um, so GVG actually did win, even though it says yeah. the bears did. So. We'll just pop right into the Bears competition here. All right. So starting off with Harmony, a pretty usual performance from him, right? Popped off, definitely. Yeah, um, I think it was like 138 after scaling, so still a pretty big week. Um, Massive, after pretty much right after his woodcutting week. Yeah, like this is one of the this is one of the bigger uh, one of the bigger weeks. So I I pulled up his actual page. You can see he did mostly uh, attack. And wood cutting and a little bit of agility, but pretty good uh, gather week, pretty much as well. Very good. I think enjoys it very well as well. He um, definitely proved himself with a near 130. That's actually nuts from him. I know there's a bit of like 0.9 mining because he's on defense or some sort. Yeah, I think he still had like a. Uh, yeah. He still had like a mil. Let's see. Yeah, 1052 mil XP. So he had a little bit of under, which is kind of cool. So. Definitely Good to see the little players game. coming out and popping off. Yeah, going. yeah, he was on pretty big uh, mining months too, so uh, I thought he'd be pretty consistent for fantasy, but it's nice to see him start off with a really big week too. It really puts a lot of confidence in uh, him for the rest of fantasy as well. And we can't forget to mention uh, Cap King, bro. Yeah, Cap, Cap King, King with popped off monster. Hold on, that hold on. Seven point eight mil. <laughs> what do you mean? Holy! Look at the graph, nice and consistent. Jesus. Yeah, showing up for the Bears, even yeah, though they lost, sure. he still popped off as well as. I mean, this seems nearly one hundred plus. We have the Sandbagger Levine, you know. Yeah. More Bandos and Nightmares only you might would have. Breached to 100, but oh, yeah. D-Legs holding him back. For sure. This is one of the bigger bigger matchups, so it's kind of hard to talk about everyone because, in, in all honesty, they all popped off. Um, dynamic with uh, 0 to 100 as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just full on for the boys, 104 F this week. Um, pretty huge, not going to lie. So, Other than that, yeah, I mean, they all did 100, uh, even after scaling, other than Levine. So 94.65 from Levine. Yeah, not that bad. Up. I actually went down to like the last minute. Like it's, I think this is the first time. I mean, obviously I'm a pretty new, but like this is the first time I've ever seen a matchup where like, I've yeah. seen them go to like day six, but never all the way down. Oh to yeah, the last, the last first time in a long time. Both teams give up their six hour for the next week to try to just yeah. clinch the win. I mean, a, a fifteen hour difference is crazy. Very close, yeah. But yeah, pretty good week from the Bears. Now let's take a look at GVG, the winners. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Winners of the matchup. So all the numbers you see here should be pretty accurate for the most part. Like Ronnie Farva had a little bit of uh, her blower, so might be a little bit different, but pretty much the same. Um, Arnat, though, with one of the biggest weeks 
of the whole competition. Uh, pretty Great huge. Week from him. All yeah, fourteen eighty five fishing. Jeez, man. I know Insane. he started off with a very good boost at the beginning. I know his six hour was over, and his. I think I don't know if he did a full thirty hour at the start, but he definitely did very well at the start. I did not notice. God, Tremendor did the one ten. Yeah, man. <laughs> Holy thirty. This team's, you can tell this team's sort of top heavy though. They have like. Yeah. Their oh big yeah, for at sure. The top, uh, Arnott, Rodney, Fast LT, and. Sub, and then towards the bottom you have our tormentor bring it up with a 110 shop with 103 yeah they're a little bit hard to rank i think because i don't you don't know how their consistency will hold up throughout the whole season but the the top three is like you said is insane arnett rodney fast lt that's like some monster yeah, that's monster that's, that's performers farva's yeah. like all her pretty much yeah 49.9 a little bit of smithing so he's got some Nice and easy EHP to carry him for a while, so should be a pretty big performer. Um, Shop, I guess, made his big return. I don't think I've seen him compete in quite a while to this degree, so shout out to him. Yeah, he popped um, off. My boy Pot Often, of course, as well. <laughs> Rithvik with the 93. Thoughts? What did you think coming into the week? Um, I expected like a 90 out of him, yeah. I think, I don't know if he, I think he promised his team a 90, and I mean, he definitely performed. Yeah, um, delivered. I feel like he did a little bit like he was trying to like keep the team together and make make sure that they won this week so props to him for stepping up and helping lead the team um definitely he, he definitely gave it his all um yeah oh yeah, yeah i think great week from ruthwick's first fantasy yeah. i believe very very involved as you said too i think he's really invested in gvg so good to see from yeah, him he really as a new wants to perform well as a new uh new fantasy participant um any other thoughts to add to the week at all or you want to move on um no i think that's it just the fact that it went down to the last minute that's still pretty nuts in yeah. my opinion insane for sure awesome week one um it was really good overall but yeah that, that first matchup really is huge um moving on to the crows though versus the cal fights had an over 100 point win but of course we're going to see a lot of teams giving up as soon as they realize it's not possible, and they got a week next week to play. So, any yeah. thoughts on this matchup? Um, I really thought this would be a lot more close. I, mm -hmm. I know I, I remember checking this competition like week three or day three or day four. I think I saw the crows were ahead by a ton. I'm not sure if the yeah cow fights had a ton unlogged or what, but like I just I don't know. It just was like kind of underwhelming. I just thought the cow fights would put a, a much bigger fight, and they just yeah yeah for sure. It's it's hard to. It's kind of hard this this uh, year to keep track of everything because of uh, so much um, unlogged XP. But I think by day three or four, we did realize that it was pretty much guaranteed for the CC. So pretty big W for them. Uh, let's head into their competition here. Um, Tom De Bomb, super inflated by the way. He I think he your calc his hours. It was about ninety seven F. So slots in right above Dolls um on the team but you know still a pretty good one week performance from him that's all they're gonna get out of him so yep he's done <laughs> yeah he's, he's see ya um well played well done. um obviously the big stars on this team are gonna be the iron men not just one not just two we got bear traps fan jukebox Higer, and timos all coming in as the top four players and i think all four of them fished as well yeah i think they all did fishing they did really fishing. well yeah, mix of two tick and barb. I'm pretty sure. Um, let me see. Higer, known comp performer, pretty standard. Tebos, seen him pop off a lot. I think he did a lot of gaming for the Jossers last year. Um, what do you think about this comp? Um, I think Jukebox and Higer and Tebos just carried them pretty much, just like with the consistency, and then Dolls Moxie Vinny just came in with like the guaranteed hours towards the end. Yeah, just for sure. The deal. I mean, Dolls, 96, yeah, 6.5 mil agility, so a lot of hours played there. Um, I mean, yeah, Vinny with the 92. I think he had a ton of unlay. Look at that. I'm looking at his graph right now. Look, he had a, a mountain of unlogged XP, man. Holy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he ended up with a 92. He's just Jeez. one of those people that just doesn't care about the high scores updating. who will just Actually, leave it for days. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a really good point you had. Actually, the bottom three on this team is insane. Dolls, Moxie, Vinny. All three people that have been gaming for a long time before Fantasy. 
So if that's their the bottom of their lineup, uh, I think things are looking pretty good, eh? Yeah, I think Moxie and Vinny and Dills, I think they'll be able to start all three of those almost every week and get a guaranteed 90-plus out of those three. Oh, for sure, Very for good. sure. But yeah, Bear Traps fan, players. Bear Traps fan taking this home with number one on the team. So shout out to him. Um, now let's see KK, and we'll start to see maybe why there was some issues here. Actually, I don't know. Pretty consistent across the board, to be honest. It's like everyone just about did the same week. Yeah, look at the ninety-eight to eighty-three, two through eight. Jeez, I don't know. Pretty consistent team. Um, I expected two players on the team to pop off a little bit more than they did, yeah. but I, I mean, don't know if, if they were just busy or mm -hmm. what. But looks like for sure the issue. Really good team. Yeah, looks like for sure the issue here was something to do with not having the like the two to three players who you really want to pop off. Like, I mean, we saw the other all the other comps we saw so far. We're looking for one ten, like not even a one ten on the team. So we're looking for like one tens, one twenties. Usually the Winning team will have a couple of those, right? So, yeah. Um. Other than that, though, let me see. Poucher, I guess, is probably his personal best week. So, shout out to him. Um. Other than that, though, I don't know. Pretty normal. Nothing yeah, too crazy know. here. I really like to see some of their pop off players really to yeah because they're gonna hard. Need like I know Corinna, Poucher, Darts. Those three are really capable of massive weeks. They're very mm -hmm. good in competition. Dead Wilson has always been consistent. He could these weeks until he's pretty much done the game i believe and then Hitty can definitely do 100 plus and he i believe he's hunting so he can pick it up and i feel like they can they're not their season's not over here though oh no 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 continue to yeah scary team i feel yeah i mean you look at the names and it looks like a strong lineup so i don't know hopefully uh they'll pick it up maybe this week they, they're one of the two big matchups um in week two, so we're looking forward to them definitely stepping it up here. Um, now, when we go to matchups again, and we're looking at the third matchup, so we got KKC versus MM. Um, I don't, I've, I feel like this one probably would have been considered a bigger upset than the first matchup, right? This is a huge upset. Yeah. This is massive. So, yeah, KKC kind of surprised. Me a bit more than Bailey, but both of us quite a bit actually. Um, let's just hop right into their their uh, lineup actually, because they had some crazy players this week. Yeah, this this is a this is a beast team. Yeah, and you'll I see. Look look at this look energy. at this number two 112 week. Uh, guess how much EHP he has, man. <laughs> <laughs> Popping okay, off. Okay, baby. <laughs> Absolute huge shout out to the man without solace, Smiley Rex. Um, that's how. Freaking crazy the guy is. So yeah, very well done by KKC Oreo. Um, just a quick note, uh, we weren't had no idea how motivated the team was, how they were going to do heading into it. So turns out they are a very involved and very motivated team, and it really did show this week. Yeah, they really seem to have some good synergy. I think they all, or like not all of them, but like a vast majority of this team started off with a 30 hour or more. Yeah. I know. Like Ellie started off with like 35 hours. Mm -hmm. um, skill second really showed up towards the beginning. Yeah, skill um, second, man. Yeah, I think uh, someone said yesterday it was like seventh round pick or something like that. So yeah, yeah. You gotta remember that this matchup was decided on like day four and a half, like right around the day five beginning yeah. mark, and these numbers to be this high, and they were only like pretty oh, much yeah. day five. They and it wasn't up after that. It wasn't just decided, right? Like we'll take. I'll scroll down here. You'll see from the. The graph of EHP over time, there's not that much of a story here. Once we switch to MM, we'll see a, a drastic story. These guys, um, their opponents didn't just lose. They fully gave up. So huge yeah. performances from them either way. These numbers would have been completely different had they yeah. finished. Um, much higher. Any, any specific... Um, I know we talked about skill second, real cute, Oreo. Tupaki, obviously, with uh, the Tupaki monster week. With the no, it's Hunter Micro. I think he's gonna one to one people to death in the future. Yeah, I think for sure. As long as he doesn't run out of that Hunter EHP, I'm not sure what his XP is, but <laughs> he is very good at Hunter. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Swifts and Sombra, two good anchors, and of course Husks, lay fantasy comp player, always showing up. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well done by him. Had some some drift net fishing here and there, you know. So interesting uh, method. 
He didn't get Blind scaled. With so. a consistent <laughs> week as expected. I think. I think like you'll see like four of these players start every single week, and then they'll just swap out from their bench. I think it'll be a really good team. Yeah. Oh yeah. For really sure. good synergy. I feel like. Yeah. Do you know if they started who they started different this week at all? Um, I know Oreo took the bench, and I think that's it. I think they only swapped out Oreo. I can't remember who. Oh, oh Pasolino is. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he'll. Uh, he's he excited manages... to play. I've fucked him as well. He's. Yeah. Exactly. If he goes big. Go. You know, then it's just another player they got. So yeah, for sure. Pretty cool from them. Um, let's see here. Go back to the matchups now. Let's look at MM. Um, and before we even look at the hours, do you mind doing me a favor? Do you want to scroll all the way down with me and look at the graph? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is what you don't do not want to see, man. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the anchor. Nice little. Yeah, looks like he played for three days. Logged out permanently. Rainbow Star, same deal. Kirsten, same deal. Ninety nine. <laughs> so big uh, shout out to uh, Asthma Demon, um, Shafu. Also, by the way, new player. Big shout out. Um, and L two for keeping up the pace here. Thank you guys for still gaming. Um, what do you think is the story here? For this week, I think this week would have been a lot closer if Mitch were able to play. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if he was busy or not, but I think if they would have swapped out Mitch, um, I feel like it would have been a very different matchup. I feel like it would have still probably went to KKC. Yeah, they were ahead like the majority of the game, but yeah, for sure. I feel like this would have been like one of those go to the last day type of games if Mitch were here. Oh, but yeah, I still think man. it was a really well played match. I know L two was on pace for a nuts week. Yeah. I know Alex and Kerry were doing very well at the start. Um, Dimension as well. Yeah. Here's oh yeah. Dimension, another back. one just like Dynamic zero to hundred. So big performance from him. Obviously, yeah, he would have done a hundred if uh, given the chance to. So. Yeah. Unfortunate that some. Um, lower lineup player issues um <laughs> caused them to give up so not a big performance from a couple players really ended up hurting them at the bottom i think definitely that's the case uh for this week would you say yeah definitely a little trolling a little bit of trolling i'm um, not gonna name team. any names um should be obvious so <laughs> <laughs> you know not a good performance um but yeah kkc with the i don't know 160 point win something like that 160 up win I don't, Pretty... I don't think this is the, the end for MM here. I no. think that they no, will no, no. rebound from this very well, in my opinion. Yeah, they're they're deep. Um, They got some players coming in, I think. Is DB Cooper on MM? Yeah, he is starting week two, I believe. Yeah, so him and, and Mitch. Mitch is back, yeah. Huge players in the past, so I don't know. I'm expecting big thing from them week two. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Interesting I mean, they matchup. Can, they can squeeze their way into playoffs. I feel like they'll be... <laughs> Very scary to play against. Oh yeah, else. for sure. Like, like, like you were saying, like the pace, like on ninety nine, dumbfounded, already huge paces there, right? So definitely yeah, who knows? capable. A lot of capable players on that team. For yeah, sure. I'm excited to weeks. see what they can do with a better lineup and over the course the course of a whole week, right? So yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Um, last matchup, Seagulls and Wizards, kind of kind of troll, I would say. Pretty surprising, honestly. Yeah, um, oh, so we'll pop into the Seagulls. Now, the long story short for this one, essentially, Jenny had to work, so he wasn't available for the start. Um, and then Bales uh, wasn't really performing up to the level of a lot of other people in the comp, so they pretty much lost from day one. Yeah. Unfortunate that Jenny had to work a lot. Um, yeah. He can come back on the weekend and kind of carry, but I just don't think that it was winnable at that point when he was back. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got Big Head doing a new skill. It's kind of worrisome. Uh, so I think yeah. he's a very good player. I think he'll be very successful this fantasy, but just his first week in fantasy and with a new skill, not yeah. Actually, really ideal for a huge week. Yeah, um, for, a, for a first uh, first week of a new skill, 6 mil mining, 3 mil Agi, Agi honestly, did pretty good. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, big week. He Number two on the team. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. yeah. Pooley as well, coming back from Army. Yeah. I don't know. If I'm in the Army for two weeks, I'm not really trying to play mm -hmm. on 130 on oh, the yeah. escape. I'm trying to yeah. chill. Like you said, and before they gave up too, like, I think all of them honestly did, like, Dakabin really showed up, you know. 
doesn't necessarily have the hugest week, so it's good to see him perform. Um, yeah. You know, Seth, Bala, Pulley. You can say the same for a lot of them. They really stepped up. Pulley, obviously, known comp player, but it's nice to see big things from Bala, Daka, specifically, I think, coming yeah, in. Yeah. Mentioned the monster week at the yeah. top of the list, bro. The, <laughs> the uh, little bit of forty of Barb. A little female. bit of a spoiler. Uh, best week in the in the whole competition. So a huge shout out to female. Um, six hour for next week. So he did a one forty seven or whatever it is. <gasps> that doesn't. Oh, is he playing for week two? Yeah, he's playing week. Oh, I actually, I'm not sure. Maybe he's not. Okay. I just know that his um his record week is different from this one. Oh, okay. 15.6 mil. Yeah, you might I think you're right here, sorry. 15.6 mil. Uh he did a 16 mil fishing week, so wow. Good for nice. second best hours wise in terms of fishing, so insane. Best um player of the whole comp. So yeah, not a Fish lot to beast. say other than absolute monster. I don't know. Yep. And yeah, you can see if you scroll down to the EHP over time as well. Looks like the whole team slowed down. And female, I know female, female had uh, a 36 <laughs> EHP fishing log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you can see it. You can see it in the graph, man. He just literally ascends, bro. You see his graph just go to the moon <laughs> on another level. <laughs> um, hopeful for the future for the seagulls, or what do you think? Uh, I think definitely hopeful. I think they have Boogie and Jenny is neat for or Jenny is Queen's birthday for two to yeah. two weeks. So. Yep. So they could, if they can get some wins under the, their belt, they might yeah, for care sure. a little bit and make it to playoffs. I could see that. Yeah, I honestly, before, because I know before we were thinking um, GVG might be a little bit of a troll team, but after week one, you can honestly say all eight of the teams, if they have like one or two unknowns come through, easily make playoffs. Yeah. So, yeah. And you have to remember about the Seagulls team as they are predominantly RS3 players. Yeah, a lot of them. So Surge didn't do... start this week. Another R three player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily R three player. I I'm think... hoping Wasby will play himself, but I feel like once he gets in there, Spuddy. Oh yeah. Some of the other R three guys, I feel like they'll do well. I think Bales is playing R three as well. Not yeah, sure and like we said, this, or not, but... at at the end of the day, with those players, this team is female big head, and then you have Poli who went huge, Bala and Daka who went had monster like exceeded expectations essentially. So. You got the lineups there. It's just got to work, right? So yeah, definitely pretty good, pretty good. And then the last team of the week we're gonna be looking at Witch Haven Wizards. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's surprising because obviously they were ranked a little bit low because we we had to pick a team. We had to pick three teams to be in the bottom three. Um, but man, they are freaking fire, dude. Yeah, they are beast. I really like this team actually. I feel like uh, Desper will be. The best like self manager player yeah. or whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it. Like we said in the sure write up, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a great player, he's new and he's really showing great potential. Um they have Steve, they have Ook, they have Eero, they have Diglett, like I'm pretty sure they picked Diglett like nine million oh. round and he's gonna do hundreds for them. And Eero didn't even play week one. Yeah, Eero was it was his <gasps> birthday, so he was off week one. Jeez, I know he's playing week two, he's really excited. Um yeah, I really think this team has a lot of synergy. It's like a lot of friends. I know Ook, Stee, Eero, they're all good friends. Desper's yeah. good friends with all of them. Bombardi popped off this week. Yeah, Monster, uh, yeah. Rich as well. I really like this team. It's yeah, definitely the big shout out to the week for this one. Definitely Lombardi and uh, Witch, who I think both set personal best. Both lower EHP players, so nice to see him step up huge. Um, Desper yeah, as well, personal cool. best, of course. But as the manager, we all expected him to go massive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know when you see Uktism Acid Frick as, as six and seven, that's in a win, that's that's huge, right? Oh, yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, they definitely have know. consistency and pop off potential in those guys for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, big fan of the Wizards. Um, let's see, Wizards. I mean, I guess we talked about the matchup mostly with the Seagulls. This week really was mostly Seagulls not even giving a chance to the uh, Wizards to show off how much they could play, so. Yeah, I think the Wizards will, their true test will be in week two against the Crows. I th feel like if they can, if even if they lose, if they just show up and do their best, I feel like, it's if, at least if it's like close, I feel like they'll be proven enough to be a top four, top five yeah. team. I feel like they're really good. 
I definitely think worst, worst case, it could be some sort of, or not worst case, but like most likely, even if they lose, it'd be some sort of uh, BBGVG situation where both teams just go nuclear, right? So Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Expecting big things from them, for sure. Um, now, when we, what do we want? You want to look at the players next? Just overall comp? Yeah. Yeah, nice. we can, real quick. So let me scroll down here. So, like we said, Harmony with the 138 actually puts him right above Arnat. So you basically just swap Harmony and female here. So we talked about the female week. Pretty huge. Um, Beast, yep. Yeah. No, it's bar week. I think it's rank two bar week, right? Uh, Yeah, rank two. Yeah, yeah. And by quite a bit because I think Big Head had super close week to mine. So I think he had okay. rank two bar by like six, seven hours. So Very nice. Yeah. At that level, yeah, a lot. Um, Harmony, usual, you know, 138. What's that for him, right? Yeah, expected. <laughs> <laughs> um, the three, and of course, the three GVG in a row at three at two for Ar or I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, three, four, five. Yeah, holy yeah, yeah. man. We're seeing a lot of fishing this comp, man. I, yeah. I, I feel like the Arab week could be taking down this this fantasy. You think so? Some sort this, of uh, maybe has to wait until is, semis but, or finals. But... Yeah, I, I really feel like that week is gonna come down. Yeah, crazy. I've been attempted by so many people. I feel like one person's gonna. So <laughs> someone has to snap. Surely, yeah. <laughs> Go brazy <laughs> one day, just freaking take it. I mean, I guess out of these ones, I don't know about maybe Fast LT might actually be the biggest uh, surprise here. What do you think? Yeah, he pop off. He, I mean, he has eleven point. I mean, nearly twelve mil mining. That's a pretty nuts week. Yeah, so very good job from him. Yeah, huge from Fast LT. Enjoys, like we said earlier. He was on really good months, so not the not as big of a surprise, but really nice to see him go huge, you know. Meet some people's expectations, exceed some people's expectations. Really um, nice to see, like, the gatherers at the top right here as well. You have, like, female fishing, Arnett fishing, Vior, woodcutting mainly. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Fast sure. LT, mining enjoys. I know he did a little bit of mining, but still some gathering. Yeah. Party fishing, like... All these, we have a lot of gatherer boys. Yeah, man. Well. They're doing really well. Cool, too. it's good to see. Um, another thing, too, that from looking at the players now, that we probably missed a few players. Um, turns out, yeah, SEBB for GVG, you know, 11th in the comp with the 115. We didn't really talk too much about him. Pretty huge week as well. That was a real surprise. He yeah, a lot of crafting. Yeah, he really went nuclear. Keeps Definitely back showed up for the gangsters yeah for sure so him i think buyers as well of course big shout out to him for showing up you know he loves fantasy so yep. expect it from him as well um but other than that i think we talked about all the other players here blind coming in at 23 all the way at the bottom of my page here um pretty normal pretty expected so yeah um any final closing words on the players tab um i hope that these weeks i hope we can see more of the Big weeks for people. I hope we don't just fall off and give up after a few weeks. Um, mainly, I just want to see some consistency. I want to see people continue to break PBs and do their best, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, big shout out to our MVP for the week, female. Um, and the three GVG guys in the top five for uh, really popping off and not giving the Bears a chance. So, pretty, pretty sick. <laughs> Um, now lastly just want to take a quick look at the standings page here we're going to talk about our, our power rankings as well um, from looking at the standings here we got KKC looks like their first um, you know MM with the 670 against them um, when we're looking at ranking teams we'll I think we'll take head to head for playoffs or hours for and against um, I believe it's one versus four, two versus three. I remember. Oh no, no, no! I mean, like, um, for making it into playoffs, like, if there's a time between fourth and fifth, is it head to head that decides the tiebreaker? It is. Yeah, it's head to head. Okay, cool, cool, sure. cool. So I think we'll have most likely. I just want to say on the standings here, you're gonna see um, it ranked based on hours. Um, when we're looking at playoff seating and stuff like that, it's gonna go based on head to head for ties. Um, but yeah, basically we got KKC first place with a 170, and then we got Crows, Wizards, and Gangsters as the other winners. And then pretty much the four losers at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then before we finish everything off, uh, you want to reveal our power ranking, which we'll yeah, post we in the Discord after the video as well, by the way, because we won't be showing it on screen because we can't be fucked, but we'll post in the Discord after. So you want to go ahead and read ours off? 
All right, so we have first the Crandor Crows. Second, we have Keldergrim Ketamine Crew. Third, we have MM, the Mauritania MTFs. We're in last place. <laughs> Fourth, we have the Witchhaven Wizards. Fifth, the Sophonim Seagulls. Sixth, the Birthorpe Bears. Seventh, Goblin Village Gangsters. And eighth, the Cowfights. Yeah. But I feel like these are very subject to change. I feel like these are based off of who we think is most likely to win the full comp. Yeah. Um, everything can change. I mean, someone can upset another team anytime, you know. For sure. So, those lower teams can definitely move up if they take some games. Yeah, absolutely. Some tough matchups. Yeah. For Crows, for example, I don't. nothing really changed. We ranked them first. They're still first. Pretty much, you know, they, they just reaffirmed how good they were with a few lesser-known Ironmen really proving themselves. Um, KKC, obviously, from 7th to 8th. Uh, from 7th to 2nd. Huge jump. Um... But I think you from that you, naughty upset and yeah, lots but of hours and they really proved their starting lineup is sick and um you know their bench players we have they we see a lot of potential in them so that's why they're the reason for the huge jump um and they beat they beat a good team right so yeah props to them you know huge upset um really good showing from them sorry Swifts for uh, we did flame you a bit too hard <laughs> <laughs> you really popped off in your draft and. Uh, Somehow you found a way to motivate your players, so props to you, buddy. Um, yeah, doing really well. And then, you know, MM, WW, talked about it in their comps. Pretty normal. Still think they're good teams. WW moved up a bit. Um, Seagulls, pretty much the same. And yeah, oh, GVG, sorry, one more thing I will say um, for GVG is that the more the weeks go on, obviously, you know, we're not going to keep them at last forever, um, but... Just waiting to see what bench players can do, right? Yeah, it's just mainly bench. I feel like they started they started six out of eight of their players from week one, and they were pretty much unable to six hour for week two. Yeah, like if we look at the... I'll go to the live, and then the matchups. If we go to the GVG Seagulls team here, it's a really big story how they, um, they, they you know, they weren't able to find any bench players to even six hours so i don't know yep well it's still a lot to prove but you know obviously one more good week from them you know i mean if they if they somehow beat the seagulls they're gonna fly up the rankings man oh yeah they're gonna balloon yep. <laughs> but yeah i think i think we'll have to wait for uh week three for gvg and then we'll be able to see how good they really are yep yeah uh so we looked at matchups players standings um anything else you want to say uh i think that's all Yes. Appreciate the uh, support and everyone not giving me too much aids from week one. Really having fun being commissioner. Yeah, thanks guys for always messaging Bailey. You know, I've been really chilling <laughs> this whole time. So <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, you can also message me, but you can also keep messaging Bailey. It's up to you. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, like Bailey said, it was easy. Um, and we had a lot of fun doing it. So both of us taking a step back, world champions, um, <laughs> to, you know, share a wisdom with the league. So yeah thanks a lot uh guys for watching uh make sure you follow us on twitter.com slash leafsnickrs and uh bailey rs with the underscore just don't even follow me don't worry about it shit tweets all right just follow me <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah other than that solace on my chest good night